Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. Recyclico's patented recycling process achieves up to 100% recovery of battery metals from lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, and aluminum. Recyclico Battery Materials Incorporated trades on the TSX Venture AMY, on the OTCQB AMYZF, and Frankfurt ID4. For more information, visit Recyclicode.com or phone us at 778-574-4444. Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR Newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. He's speaking to us from Arizona. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Glad to be here, Jim. Thanks for having me. Do we have a special offer for our listeners? Let's continue to do it and give everyone the opportunity to sign up, particularly with the uh, hot crypto market out there now and that Bitcoin letter that we do. So 50% off, code is 2022 half off. And you go to VR Trader, Victor Robert, VRTrader.com, and enter that promo code 2022 half off in the promo code slot. Also, uh, I'd like to disclose, as I normally do, I'm not a financial advisor, nor do I provide financial advice for regulatory reasons. I'm just a newsletter publisher. Mark, the U.S. government claims the uh, economy grew 4.9% of the third quarter. Does that match up with numbers you've looked at? Well, let me say first, I don't believe any of the government numbers. Um, the uh, BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, I call the, uh, you know, pretty much the Bureau of Lying Statistics. Um, I don't really trust any, you know, I, honestly, I don't trust any corporate or government number. You know, if it's in private sector, it could still be fudged. Uh, you know, an analysts come out, you hear calls after the close. They make uh, earnings estimates, and they have all kinds of qualifications, and they they make projections, and some don't come th- true, and some do. And, you know, books can be doctored. They've done that in, in the past. So I like to look at the charts. I like to look at the, uh, you know, the sentiment readings, the cycles, and all that other kind of stuff. But, you know, the fact that you're seeing, you know, positive numbers, I think, is just creating a false positive expectation. Um, you know, I, I think, frankly, what's happening is consumers are – running out of cash. Uh, they're digging into savings, the COVID uh, blessings that came in, you know, those have been, those have been dissipated. And uh, the high interest rates that are out there now, I think, you know, the consumer is going to be in a lot of trouble and come next year. And uh, if not already, and I think that's going to manifest in, uh, you know, s- you know, slower, uh, you know, I guess retail sales and all the other kind of stuff that's reported. Not only that, the retail sales numbers that do come out, again, I don't trust them, but they're not inflation-adjusted. So it's really a lot of misinformation out there. We've been hearing also, as you know, about a soft landing and uh, no recession. Uh, we're lucky we don't get a crash. That's my opinion. So I think <laughs> I think things are a lot worse uh, economically than being, being portrayed. And um, you're starting to see some of the selling come into the market here recently, the last few days. So the only hope is that the... Um, plunge protection team comes out which is you know the government agency that manipulates the stock prices and indexes and they try to create a year-end rally which is generally expected to start at any time here we have halloween coming up trick-or-treat and uh usually you get a sell-off in october and uh sometimes even more severe than what we've already experienced and um then we get a bounce you know we got the thanksgiving holiday in the u.s you've got santa claus rally and all these expectations for the year-end uh, rally. In fact, even the January barometer, which was Yale Hirsch's creation back in the 1970s, uh, and nothing is perfect, but it has about 75, 80% reliability, you know, predicted in January that we would close positive for the year. And we're not that far away from the highs that, that they want to stage a nice rally here. You know, we could see uh, highs into the end of the year, and if it's, you know, pushed up by... Uh, the government or other, you know, manipulative, manipulative forces, then uh, that could still happen. So we've got to watch it here the next few days. I'm just getting off on a tangent a little bit, but I know you want to cover this. So, you know, we're, we're at the time frame that maybe something could happen, but let's wait to see if we get some technical confirmation. We had Amazon come out with some positive 
um, notes and earnings after the close, and that's rallying the market a little bit after a pretty negative day here on Thursday. So a um, lot to talk about. I mean, a lot going on out there, so let's let's get with it. Is Amazon going to be the company we buy everything from eventually? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll be the one that'll take us into outer space too. You know, with uh, Jeff Bezos and that uh, that rocket uh, deal that he's got going. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, the stock is still off from its highs, and you sure. I mean, I know a lot of people, including myself, buy stuff from it, and he's a great model. Um, but again, it's based on you know retail purchases, and if a consumer is uh, you know. Slowing down, that's going to affect Amazon to a certain degree, too. You know, that's pretty much the nature of their business. Now, some have mentioned uh, people are making money finally on their savings accounts, and they're spending the money that they're making from that source. Is that something that you've seen? I've, I've read about it. I heard mm-hmm. stories that seniors, including myself, you know, getting their 5% interest and taking that money and taking cruises. <laughs> So that's uh, one of the stories out there. Sure, I mean that's uh, the high interest is a is a positive, and uh, if you trust the government and uh, you trust the treasuries, I wouldn't trust any other government. Obviously, it's my well, maybe Canada, but most of them you got to be careful. But uh, sure, I mean that's a possibility. But is that you know is that enough of money to turn the economy around? I don't know. You know, you got the government having to pay interest on its debt at higher interest rates now which is a negative. So there's, you know, two sides to the coin here. You know, the government has to pay all this extra interest, which is more deficits, which is more negative negative factors for the government and the economy and uh, the Fed and interest rates. So, you know, interest rates are probably still going to go higher. Maybe we'll get 6 or 7% on mm-hmm. those treasuries sometime next year. Who knows? You know, the Fed's playing a game. You know, you know my opinion of the Fed, I've been writing about, abolishing it for decades which is not going to happen but it should be and uh we got congress still spending money here in the u.s and uh, you know the problems aren't being uh, solved and we're not even talking about world war three which i believe is already has already underway you know they're just not talking about it you know so it's uh things are getting pretty nasty uh geopolitically and I, don't, I think uh, as days and weeks move forward, particularly with what's happening in Israel and the anti-Semitism issue and all the riots and demonstrations here in the U.S., Canada, and in London and around the world, um, this is a pretty negative time. You know, it's, it's tough to be bullish. I mean, the stock market, you know, sometimes uh, does well at the most peculiar times and the stories that uh, the market likes war because of the business that's created. So there are a lot of ways to look at this. So what you got to do is decide if 5% is good enough for you to be safe. And if you want to trade the market, I'm sure we're going to get plenty of uh, trading opportunities here uh, in the weeks and months ahead up and down. I mean, even intraday today, if you bought a big sell-off in the first couple hours, we had a nice intraday bounce, and then it came down again into the close. So it just depends how uh, aggressive you are. But um, I'm uh, just answering your question about the... Uh, you know, the interest and in helping the economy, I guess that does to a certain degree, but uh, it, it, I, I think it's it, it's not the solution. It's just a temporary, not temporary, but a small part of the issue. Do you think people are taking cruises and uh, going on lavish vacations right now because they're scared there could be another lockdown at some point? <laughs> That's an interesting thought, right? I mean, but, but you get locked down on the ship too. Somebody gets COVID or some crazy communicable disease on on board there's been stories already where people get sick on board or they're trapped on the ships um i'm not taking any cruises for a while you know i'm not into the cruise scene anyway but yeah the risks uh on the scene on the seas and you know you can get uh, you know pirates on the seas attacking ships we've seen that in the past too got a lot of nasty stuff going on out there with hamas and iran and uh sponsoring terror all over the world, and we have a lot of immigrants coming into the United States from the southern border. Many are known terrorists and criminals, and uh, there could be more violence around. You know, it's sort of a, you got to own gun stocks. I mean, I recommended uh, Sturm Ruger and uh, um, SWI Smith & Wesson because you know, a lot of people are thinking they're going to have to defend themselves at some point if things continue to get worse. There was a big shooting in Maine, I think it was today or yesterday, 18 or 20 people were were shot 
and um you know there's just stuff going on uh you gotta you know you can't protect yourself obviously if there's a crazy person out there and you're in the wrong place at the wrong time but uh less I, honestly for me the less traveling i do the more i stay put including cruises and air travel i'm i'm sitting tight here for a while i think the next you know year unless it's some super surprise i think uh, could be a bit treacherous We'll have more with Mark Leibovit right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mark Leibovit. Mark, cryptos seem to be uh, doing very well. What's the story there? Yeah, we, we did well on that. Uh, we've been long um, GBTC in our newsletter, uh, which is the Bitcoin Trust, and uh, we got long originally around 8 bucks. It was down from about 58 bucks, and it rallied to about 26 27 So we actually you know put out a note, hey, it's a good time to ring the register and take a little profit here. It's had a nice move, and even though I think if you go back to the highs or higher down the road, you know, that's why we have the logo VR Trader. I mean, we're looking to make some money on paper. I think it was about a 67% gain on the on that particular position that we uh, exited. So it rallied because uh, apparently the SEC will poss- probably approve GBTC as a ETF. There was uh, court fights about that. They had a the company had to sue the SEC. They lost, and that helped the stock. And as we also know, um, Larry Fink that BlackRock is still in the application, most likely a pro- proving process of getting uh, an ETF to BlackRock, which is the largest, I believe, money manager in the world. So that would create buying pressure because if you buy the ETF, you know, let's call it, you know, the GB ETF or whatever they call it, uh, uh, th- th- then they have to go out and buy the Bitcoin fill the orders and that will drive prices higher just like when after the world gold council created gld uh which is the etf for gold that drove prices higher for the same reason so um what can i say it's it's a big opportunity still um if you just held it and didn't trade it you'll probably be okay we saw a little action in ethereum which is the uh, other big uh crypto out there but i guess the safer bet with the um you know with larry fink and uh, all the interest in it now and also the concern about currency and whether your money is safe in the banks you know that's why it was created to begin with get your money out of the system you know we don't know how safe the system is i mean we've seen a lot of a lot of negatives here you know it could be runs on the banks it could be the impl- uh, the in, in, in induction of the um the current, the you know, digital coin. Suddenly, overnight, you you have no cash in your bank. You've got a digital coin. Some people are worried about that. It seems like young people are not as concerned as older folks. But you know, that's an impairment of our freedom because there'll be government surveillance of your activity. And um, so that's why um, the cryptos have a place. You know, just like gold has a place, like real estate has a place. You know, the stock market's not the only place, you know. So I guess your treasuries, crypto, gold, real estate, a lot of places to talk about besides uh, Amazon. Mm. And what's going on with gold? <laughs> Love it. Mm. We're still in this positive cycle. My model, I came out with a positive, the beginning it was positive. It said, you know, so it would trend higher for the year. I know we've had a couple dips along the way. We got over 2,000 an ounce within the last week or so. Mm-hmm. And now the question is, uh, we pulled back again, and are we gonna have another surge now? I'm thinking we should. Mm-hmm. And uh, whether we can take out the big, big high based in US dollars at 2070, that's to be seen. I'd love to see that happen, because that would be a big breakout. That would break a, a triple top on the charts. And then you can only guess, as I could guess, or anybody could guess as ne- where the next resistance level is. We just have to measure it when it gets there. So, um, I'm, you know, you, you got to, you know, we're there. I mean, I think it's still a place to be, and uh, it's volatile. I mean, they could, you know, fool us, go back up to 2000, 2050, and then come all the way back down to 17, 1800 again, and then do it again in six months. I mean, it's a very volatile uh, and manipulated commodity, which I 
talked about many times through the work of GATA, uh, the Gold Action Trust Group, GATA.org. They've been studying this for decades, talking about suppression of gold and government intervention, and we can get into a whole discussion about that, but putting that aside, the gold itself looks okay. So, yeah, I would uh, stick with it. I would stick with it anyway, because it's a hedge against currency, it's a hedge against government. I guess the great fear is that uh, do we pull another FDR confiscation of gold uh, scenario in the uh, years ahead, as we did once before? You know, history repeats in different ways, so that, I guess that's your risk. So you have to keep your gold, you know, in a place they can't get it or out of the country or someplace if you believe that's a risk. Why do you think China's being so aggressive right now? Uh, their Coast Guard ramming Philippine ships, uh, their fighter planes getting dangerously close to American and Canadian patrol aircraft. Or is that just something China likes to do? <laughs> Yeah, maybe China like building islands in, in yeah. territory that doesn't belong to them. I mean, uh, they're trying to, you know, establish themselves, I guess, as the bully of the day. And uh, they're testing the rest of the world. I mean, they're, t- they're testing the U.S., the rest of the world. You know, how far can they push? What can they do here? They're backing Iran. They're with Iran against Israel. So according to the stuff I'm reading, you know, uh, they're, they're trying to create, um, you know, uncertainty and disruption around the world. They're looking to take over the world and in their own way. You know, they're economically, they've made a big step in that direction. Of course, internally, they say the country itself has got uh, economic problems with their real estate collapse and a high unemployment. But still, you know, uh, when things are uncertain, sometimes countries start wars, you know, gets things moving and getting the wheels turning again. So, China's been very aggressive in Africa and Asia, and, uh, you know, they have a base in Cuba now. And, uh, I mean, you know, this is just part of their big global uh, multi-decade, uh, you know, plan to take over the planet and uh, diminish the U.S. and the West. And uh, this is part of the plan. That's the only way. My question is, when are they going to attack Taiwan? You know, we have a weak U.S. president. You know, we've got ourselves in two fronts now with Ukraine and with the Mideast, and that plays into the hands of China. Um, You know, if they attack Taiwan tomorrow, what would the U.S. really do about it? It's a big question, you know, to really see it. So uh, formidable ally, and uh, that's why I say World War III is already under the way. I mean, China's doing all these things. You know, it doesn't have to be the same type of war that we've seen. There's different ways of conquering countries. Internally, you know, you know, scaring people, intimidating people economically. There's a lot of ways of taking things over, and uh, China's already done that here in the U.S. with technology and, you know, uh, paying uh, bribery or other fees to uh, politicians and to other business people. It's uh, they're very savvy about it, and they've been doing a good job. And the way it looks, they will ultimately be successful. Some. Analysts that I know have been predicting by 2050, 2060, you know, in this this decade, uh, I mean, the century uh, that they could be, uh, they could be the leading power and be fully in charge. So we'll see if that uh, takes 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 root. But right now, uh, again, that's you know, that's the concern. Anything uh, geocosmically to keep an eye on? We do have a full moon uh, this weekend as we go into Halloween. Right, I was going to mention that. So you got Halloween coming up, and you got the full moon coming up, and um, then you've got. Then um, it was also uh, reported just today, in fact, on spaceweather.com, there was an unexpected, uh, a really unexpected uh, geomagnetic storm, which cracked an open opening in the Earth's magnetic field today, and it only lasted five hours. But that surprised all the uh, all the uh, analysts and scientists. Um, we also, as you just know, had that big hurricane Otis down in Mexico, killed, uh, you know, dozens of people, uh, came as a big surprise. They didn't yeah. think a storm like that could develop this late in the season, came, became a Category 5 storm. That's certainly a, a, you know, geocosmic event. And then not only that, right after the uh, storm, there was a big earthquake in uh, Mexico following that. So a lot of geocosmic stuff going on out there. So, yes, we got the full moon coming up, and we got Halloween, maybe it's trick-or-treat. Maybe the market's going to sell off into uh, Halloween or the full moon and then have a November rally. I mean, that's a possibility. So I'm watching the charts to see if that unfolds. And, 
these are little cycle points that you got to pay attention to. So uh, it might be trick or treat. Mark, thank you so much for chatting with us. My pleasure. Thank you. My guest has been Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR newsletter, is also known as VRTrader.com. If you have any questions for Mark or for any of our guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on X at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.